and I, we had made a PowerPoint and it's circulated to all students. And then there'll be around three to four pages of intense literature review, intense literature review, followed by two, three pages of uh, results and interpretations, or at least observations and interpretations. And one final page of a possible way forward, you know, something more can happen, maybe at a thesis level or at a doctoral level and things like that. And then one concluded concluding page on all the websites which are accessed on which day and all the books and all the journals. So that is it. That is it. So it, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling nice that I could share this with you face to face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's thank good. You yeah. It's just a small idea, so everybody can come out with their talent, the best, you know, and mm -hmm. their background strength, the background, the background potential. Okay, so I think Professor Bhattacharya has very, Professor Bhattacharya has very kindly. Abraham, I'm in a class. I'll just get back to you. Yeah, I'm just calling. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just calling. Oh, wonderful! I'll just get back to you. I'll just get back to you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I think so. Kindly look at the wonderful one, two, three, four note from Professor Bhattacharya. Please note them once for all. So they're very clear. It's a simple submission. So I think Professor Bhattacharya, we are almost done. So I think it is our pleasant duty to uh, so to hand it over to Professor Dube for his kind deliberation. Anything else that you wish to say, Professor Bhattacharya? Yeah. <coughs> Uh, as such, no. So, if you have any further clarification, you can write down in the teams. Right. And I have already uh, created. I'll again check the assignment portal uh, folder or in right. the MS Teams. You can submit uh, uh, on or before eighth of uh, October. Okay. Wonderful. Professor. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor Dube, for your kind bearing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's over Thank to you. you. It's over to you. It's over to you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll slowly disperse. Shonko will be here for some more time. Okay. Okay. That's. I fine. just got a call from my head, so I'll call him back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. You take Thank over. You. Okay, so good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, so we'll uh, get started. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, I think uh, you should be able to see my screen now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll put it on slideshow. And get my marker from here, uh, pointer. Okay. So as you know, you are in this class uh, IKS uh, 60001, uh, which is on uh, introduction to Sthapatya, Vastu and Nirman Vidya and Arthasastra. So within that, uh, as uh, during the first uh, inaugural uh, lecture, uh, which uh, Professor Joyce uh, presented the overview of the course, uh, you know that there are different modules. So what we are looking at uh, today and other two weeks from uh, today, like uh, the, these three Wednesdays, uh, 22nd, 29th, and uh, that would be, I think, 6th. Uh, these three Wednesdays, uh, we are, uh, focusing on environment and public health engineering. So that's what uh, our uh, uh, focus would be. So in terms of uh, environment and public health engineering, as uh, I have just kind of, if you have, looked, you have looked at this before, but I just copied and pasted here again so that we can talk about it a little bit. So what, what we are going to talk about uh, today and uh, other two weeks is uh, looking at uh, water energy management uh, in ancient India, uh, how water was managed, how energy uh, management was there. So, and uh, every, like the way uh, I have uh, uh, thought of uh, putting this uh, module, as you know, every, every professor has a different way of uh, uh, teaching. So what I thought was uh, we will try to start with a big picture, like a try to talk about like a historical issues associated with uh, uh, like environment. Uh, when we say environment, it is water. It is uh, when we say water, wastewater is also included in that. So we have water. You can say wastewater, uh, waste. Waste could be uh, solid waste. Wastewater is also liquid waste. Then you have the air pollution issues. You have the uh, 
uh, like soil pollution issues. So, so there are environment by itself is a huge area. So, and uh, e as you know, each one has a separate courses, isn't it? So water, we have a separate course on water. We have separate course on wastewater. We could have multiple courses in these areas too, depending on how much deeper we want to go, how specialized we want to go. So this will be more like an overview and try to take because we have to we have several things we want to cover and as you know this this entire course is kind of looking at the different aspects so water energy management we'll talk about uh, that some sustainable water management practices uh, from ancient india like afforestation rainwater harvesting uh, har and pine system of irrigation gabar band and others so this topic 1 and topic 2 will actually uh, mostly in that last lecture that you will have uh, Professor Desai, uh, who is our, our dean as well right now. So he will touch upon uh, the second part, especially the sustainable water management practices. It, it is it, that will be focus of his course. And um, in terms of uh, Indian traditional liquid and solid waste management system, how the wastewater has been managed, uh, how the gray water has been managed. So th there is a difference between wastewater and gray water. Wastewater is essentially whatever you flush down the toilet. Usually we use the term wastewater for everything, isn't it? So, but wastewater, uh, so there is a black water and there is a gray water. So wastewater is kind of your entire stuff. And within that, there is, you can call it a black water. Black water is something which you just flush, which you flush down the toilet. And the gray water is something other, like other than that. For example, when you use the uh, sink, when you use kitchen uh, stuff and, your dishwasher, washing machine. So those are your gray water. And uh, we try to do the gray water recycling uh, these days. If you, uh, those of you who are from say civil background or uh, architectural background, you must have heard about green buildings. You must have heard about, uh, uh, if you're not, you will hear about green buildings. You will. So there uh, we do have this concept of trying to take all this water, uh, which is gray water, other than the toilet water, and you try to use it, uh, you recycle it, use it back for the flushing system, use it back uh, for, uh, say, uh, horticultural purposes, and those kind of stuff. And so there were, there were some of these practices has been there since uh, long, so we'll try to uh, touch upon those as well. Then, uh, whatever we are learning, uh, like how it is relevant in today's contest. So, in fact, I would, after giving you the big picture overview, which you will, will start soon, then I will kind of go into what are the issues out there? What are the environmental issues uh, which is presently uh, we are facing? I'll, I'll, I'll share some some of the historical uh, like events that has happened. Uh, in in recent times, not and then we'll try to go that how the ancient knowledge uh, is actually going to probably help us uh, manage it better, uh, like or manage it a different way. See, with uh, so when we say better, it's not always uh, like it's it's all many times it's a uh, it's see many many things we talk about is not always zero and one. It's not. Uh, it's uh, things are which we say that things are not black and white. They are mostly gray. So we will talk about that. So it's uh, it's in terms of uh, how uh, knowledge from our uh, like ancient knowledge can help us do certain things in a much better way today. So lesson from the past will be highlighted and some case studies will be pre presented. So that's what we thought of in this particular module. Uh, like uh, during the entire course uh, today. Uh, uh, during the entire these three weeks, whatever uh, feedback you have, if you uh, want to put some discussion point, go ahead and do that in the chat box. So we will uh, we'll be happy uh, to look at the chat box. And it's always better to have a two-way dialogue rather than having a one-way dialogue, like I'm just talking, talking, talking. But since we have so many students registered for this course, I would appreciate if you uh, uh, keep your questions. Every day we'll try to have... Uh, keep some time uh, for the questions. Maybe I'll pick up some in between if I'm tired and then we can just have a uh, uh, like having a conversation. And also towards the end also we'll try to do it. But in between as well, I'm not saying that you should you should, you should just keep quiet. You should always uh, ask question. Okay, so if you have any question, feel free to ask. Uh, and uh, we, chat box is a good way to put it, but you can also uh, come up and uh, ask question in a like a, and uh, unmute yourself and ask question as well. So that's that's fine. Uh, but uh, and so, and uh, 
we'll we'll go from there. So uh, since you will have to deal with me uh, for next two weeks, and some of you may not be uh, familiar with uh, my background, so I thought I will just very briefly in a minute I'll just give you my background. Uh, I'm I'm a local from Kharagpur, so as Professor uh, Sankapratim Bhattacharya. In fact, I, uh, we did uh, class tenth uh, from the same school. Uh, so it's a, uh, I'd say I did, uh, if you go to, I'm, many of you may be familiar with campus, some of you might have not come to campus yet because of this pandemic, but uh, we graduated, uh, like I graduated from railway schools uh, in uh, Kharagpur, Kharagpur has several railway schools, and uh, the one which is uh, this railway boys school is very close to the Gold Bajar, which uh, when you come here, you, you may have seen that, then this is school is closer to the railway station. Uh, then uh, uh, then I did my BTEC from IIT Kharagpur itself. Uh, worked uh, as a consulting engineer in EIL, which is uh, mostly uh, based in Delhi, but I used to travel quite a bit, many places. Uh, uh, in And out of that four years, I uh, for one year I was in Bombay High, where I would be in the middle of the sea for 15 days and, and on land for 15 days. And during that period, I prepared when I, was, I used to be in the middle of the sea. The middle of the sea with the work will only, only be done when the sea is calm. So sometimes we'll have a lot of free free days. And then we, when we start working, we'll be continuously working almost like 24 hours a day for several days. So whenever it, and uh, because of uh, roughness of the sea, we would get we would get several downtime. And during those downtime, I used to prepare for my GRE. <laughs> so just wanted to, then I went to uh, uh, University of Florida, uh, graduate work leading to PhD. I don't have a formal master's degree. I did complete all the master's requirement and converted to PhD. So I don't, uh, I have my BTEC and PhD, no MTEC or no MS or anything. Uh, then I worked in Florida, the worked in New Zealand, worked in US, Canada, Then and then I came back to my alma mater, my hometown uh, in March, 2015. And since then I'm there. Uh, well, and uh, right now, I presently I'm on sabbatical again back in US, uh, but, uh, uh, like again, I'll be I'll be back. So this is my actually high school picture. This is the logo of uh, my my say like a really mixed school where I did my class 12th from. This was West Bengal board. This was ICSC board. Then of course you know IIT Kharagpur, then uh, University of Florida. So those are my lineage. So whatever I have learned, whatever I'm going to share with you is from these places. So uh, so let's get started. So why why study environment? Like why the environment has become so important? Uh, in recent times, we talk a lot about environmental issues. So if you look at, uh, because of a lot of human activity, say you look at this picture here, it's nice and clean and other stuff. And uh, it, these things does not have happened overnight. It, uh, uh, it like a, we have, in the name of development, we have, uh, we are doing a lot of human activities where we are producing a lot of emissions, isn't it? So those, uh, as I, I think um, many of you who are our own undergrad, you have taken EVS class in uh, in your second year. If you are, a, uh, I think most of you probably will be in your third year, fourth year, then we may have been having masters and PhD students here as well. So uh, in terms of, uh, uh, in, so some of these you have already covered in EVS class, so we can go really fast here, isn't it? So just to kind of recap and bring you to the same speed, try to have that uh, overall picture. Uh, so based on human activities, based on even natural activities as well, uh, there are uh, uh, natural processes which also contributes to, uh, say, methane emissions and other things to the environment. But there are a lot of human activities, as you can see the picture, the mining, uh, industrial. So these pictures are just giving you some snapshot of different aspects like uh, mining activities, industrial activities, different types of industries, then transportation sector. You may have uh, uh, learned about it or you, if you're not, you will learn about it uh, as, uh, as, in, as part of this course as well, some aspect of this. So all these relates to a lot of emissions and emissions is one thing which we look at uh, because that's kind of visible. Uh, I wanted to put this mining picture there as well so that we can relate. It's not only the emissions which is happening at the end, like when, when you're using the product. While making the product as well, we do have a lot of environmental emissions. So you create a lot of environmental footprint as uh, 
as you kind of get into uh, like a processes, uh, like a, starting from the mining activity itself. Mining uses lots of water. Mining uses lots of energy. So it's a uh, uh, and the energy, if it's coal-based thermal power plant, which is kind of 55 to 60 percent of energy today, is what we have. It's a coal-based energy. Now the coal also needs to be mined. Coal, uh, so mining again, uh, water footprint. And it, like a lot of energy goes into mining activities, transportation of the mining materials. So that's and bringing it to the factories, getting it into a uh, form which can be usable form, making products out of that. So all those things requires a lot of uh, energy, water, other resources. And these leads to having an environmental footprint. So. So that's why uh, it's uh, so it's not only the emissions that you see over here or the vehicular emissions that you see over here is causing environmental issues. There are a lot of other things happening too. Just wanted to, and then that has led to with all these human activities, especially over the period of last uh, uh, say 60, 70 years after the Second World War, uh, when we had a huge industrial revolution. And we started seeing lots of uh, different kinds of industries coming up. Now we are, we call what industry 4.0, uh, industry 3.0, 2.0, and all those, uh, so on and so forth. So when uh, this has led to uh, like enormous increase in emissions, and that has created a huge environmental problem today. So of course, part of it is related to the population increase. Part of it is also with the more the population, more requirement for resources and so on and so forth. We'll talk about that. But also, if you look at the way we have progressed uh, and the way uh, the, that's where the ancient knowledge, uh, the knowledge from the uh, say several several years ago from uh, the Indian traditional knowledge, that's where it comes in picture that where we have actually gone wrong. And if you think about today, again, we are trying to come back to the same thing. You may have heard the term of circular economy or uh, linear economy. So far, we are mostly relying on what is known as the linear economy. What is linear economy? You go to the mining, you get all the raw materials, you bring it to all these factories, you make all those products, you use the products. While using the product, also you are creating a lot of environmental emissions, and then you are uh, dumping the product into the environment. So it's take, make, dispose. So just take the material from Mother Earth, make different products, use the product, and get it disposed. So we are not really, that, that's, that's the economy that we have been following until today. There has a lot of been interest, that, that's the linear economy. Why linear economy? It's a straight line, isn't it? You are taking things, making things, disposing things, that's it. The circular economy concept says that, no, let's try to minimize the waste that is being produced, reduce the waste that is being, production, is being produced. So we have to use the material in such a way so that we can keep on using it for a longer period of time, as much as possible, like a technically and uh, possible. And then at the end of its life as well, let's extract those material as much as possible again, bring it back into the economy. So it's a so you like not uh, take make no disposal. You are bring, taking the resource recovery, bringing it back into the economy again. So that becomes your circle. That's why it is called circular economy, isn't it? That linear is straight line, circular means sir. So circular economy says no waste. Try to minimize the waste. And when, I, when I'm talking about waste, it's not only solid waste we are looking at. We're talking about solid waste, liquid waste, air emissions, all. So no environmental emissions. Let's try to minimize the environmental emissions. Of course, we cannot have no environmental emissions uh, because based on the technologies and other things possible there, we cannot really have a zero waste, uh, as we call. Uh, there is a concept of zero waste as well. You may have heard about the concept of zero waste. But zero waste is... It's it's a it's a concept. It's it doesn't mean that literally zero zero. We are it's the approach towards going to zero waste. Now, if you take that and you just even uh, in terms of our traditional knowledge, if you just go back, not even I would say don't uh, we don't have to go to kind of uh, 
uh, like the Aryan civilization, like even uh, like our Indus Valley civilization and all that. Even just if you go back 100 years or what you have seen in those of us who comes from villages, especially of our age now, mid 40s and moving towards 50 now. So it's uh, if you look look at uh, like when we were kids, some, some of you may not be uh, like though you may have heard or it's still in rural areas, you may have seen those practices. There was a concept of circular economy already there, isn't it? The concept of circular economy is already there in many of the rural places even today. We, we take all those food waste, for example, from our individual houses, put it in a ditch, and that ditch over the year, and so we have a kind of hole, we just keeps on dumping there, or say maybe, maybe slight, and then at the end of the year, just before the growing season, what it gives us a nice fertilizer. And we have been doing that practice for, I think, many, 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 many years. Uh, so we get those fertilizers. We have given a beautiful name to it in recent past called compost. Uh, but it is that practice was already there. And you get those stuff. So we were out and then it's a rich in nutrients. It has a, a microbial mass as well. You take that material, bring it back into the agricultural field. No chemicals, all natural and you have your natural fertilizer. And so that was in practice from our uh, traditional knowledge. In recent past, we moved to this urea and th all those kind of stuff. Now, again, <laughs> we are trying to go back to those natural fertilizers because when we realize the drawback of all these, uh, of course, see, whenever there is a, there, again, as I said earlier, there is no, never it's a, never it's black and white. It's always gray, isn't it? So there are challenges associated with every processes. There are benefits of yes, going for urea and going for other stuff at that particular time did help us in increase in productivity, increase in our green revolution, and try to bring more uh, uh, food on the table. So those were great, but it also helped lead to a lot of uh, uh, degradation on the soil quality. So uh, probably we. we we could have done in a slightly different way so that we could have also prevent the soil quality so that uh, we can use uh, uh, that the, the fertility of the soil should not have gone down. So those so again, it's again, it, there are a lot of pros and cons and there we can we can debate uh, from both sides of the aisle on that. But so that's not uh, that's, of course, is one aspect. But here we are as part of this three weeks. What we will try to do is try to highlight the knowledge uh, which could have been used or should have been used or can be used uh, to make things better than where we are today. So that's that will be uh, uh, stuff. So before we get into uh, the like a um, uh, nitty gritty details, I wanted to put again things in slightly much, much broader context. See, we are talking about when we talk about environment, when we talk about all things, essentially what we are looking at, we are trying to prevent this earth from becoming a messy place, isn't that's the what the whole goal is? So it should be cleaner, it should be uh, much safer, it should be where uh, safer from say our water is good, uh, our air is good, our soil is good. If water gets polluted, air gets polluted, soil gets polluted, then even if you have say very uh, lavish uh, packages. Say after you graduate from IIT Kharagpur, you get a big, very good job, and, and with a huge package and all that. But if if water, air, soil is polluted, what what to do with that money? Say if I get sick all the time because of getting dirty water, because I'm getting exposed to dirty water on a daily basis. If I have cannot right now because of this pandemic, we should wear mask. Uh, and we, uh, and uh, we, especially when they are in public places. But if I have to wear masks, say throughout my life, uh, just because of the air pollution in Delhi or Bombay or say Kolkata and other places or anywhere in the world, it's so that's not really uh, enjoying uh, the life. And think about our future generations too. So if you look at the age of the earth say if you look at uh, the entire kind of humans existence as well as the uh, like uh, this planet uh, existence so we'll try to again uh, try kind of to look at the bigger picture so earth is around 4.6 billion years old that's what uh, has been uh, reported 
some of the newer research suggests that it is even older than that so but we will not go into that debate don't get we'll, let, let's not let's take it as 4.6 billion years old it could be older but that does not really going to change much what we are trying to cover uh, right now so and if you take that 4.6 billion years put it on a 24 hour scale uh, like a, we have 24 hours in a day as uh, we all know so that's why if you put it in a 24 hour scale as you can see here so in if why 20 as i said 24 hours makes it easier for us to understand to relate because that's what we kind of do so one second becomes 52000 years that's a long time isn't it 52000 years so the entire uh, that uh, that the subject area, the timeline of this course is within that one second. <laughs> That's what uh, isn't within that one second we are talking about. So it's a uh, if if you put that in that context, you feel like oh my god, it's it's such a small time. Uh, and if you look at our individual ex existence from a child to growing up and then finally getting older and then uh, finally disappearing from this uh, earth and probably come up come back in a different form. Uh, if if you if you believe in all that so but uh, uh, will so it's it's again um, it's your uh, so if you look put that in this in the context of our life we don't even this exist uh, for maybe what microseconds or milliseconds or something like that that's it so it's a uh, in this uh, uh, timeline if you look at when the Earth is uh, like when this planet is started when our mother Earth has started its its journey uh, we had. The, the formation of the earth that's a that's a zero uh, zero line that's where you we start and then there were some uh, late heavy bombardments and these are all hours so one hour two hour three hour four hour and then we come back to 24 hours okay so there is not much activity as much you don't see a uh, too much of activity here around eight so if you say if you started at the midnight if you started at midnight and you follow railway tire railway uh, time uh, railway uses uh, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, like that. So let's uh, uh, follow that railway style of time reporting time. So if you go here, so around 8 a.m. in the morning, you see that you had uh, last common universal ancestors. Uh, so that says Lu Luca. So that's where uh, you had uh, some activity showing up. Then you see some activity again. The bacteria begins to produce oxygen after 9 a.m. in the morning. So that's so we started in the midnight and we have a come up to 9 a.m. So nine hours, not much activity, but then you start seeing some oxygen being produced by bacteria. Now, then great oxygenation event. So that becomes life becomes possible on this particular planet. Uh, you have uh, when the oxygen was no longer captured by the ocean, initial oxygen was all captured by the ocean. So begins a significant increase in the atmosphere. So the chances of getting uh, life on this planet. But again, up to around 6 p.m., so 18 hours, we start seeing the plant life species in the form of green algae. Then you have first, uh, uh, like a, some first, uh, another species started showing up, insects appears, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs doesn't appear until almost like 10, uh, almost uh, closer to 11 hours, like uh, 11 p.m. in the evening, 2300, 2300 hours. So we had some plus, before that we had some land species, we had some uh, fish and all that, then we have uh, dinosaurs. Then the mammals appear at around 11, uh, 13, 2300 hours as well. Then dinosaurs disappears, and uh, that's also a long, long time ago, isn't it? Uh, uh, last uh, mass extinction in which dinosaurs disappears. Then you have the genus Homo, uh, which is coming up at 23:59-12 hours. So that's the genus Homo. So that's for 12 hours means 48 seconds. That's it. And then if you talk about the modern humans, they come into existence at 23:59-56 hours. So that's the so our existence on this planet as modern humans is only for four seconds and that's we are talking about our ancestors too like uh, like modern modern human ancestors some uh, but genus homo if you take that that's 48 seconds but modern humans four seconds that's it but that four seconds is close to 200,000 years so because if you multiply this by four you're getting close to 200,000 years so 
and of course and then that's the we have we have started uh, generating knowledge over this 200000 years of course uh, there were different events in between and then ups and downs happens in every civilization so that also happened uh, but uh, overall we saw there was an increase uh, 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 like an increase in uh, uh, like a knowledge that have built up so that's that's what uh, uh, we will be kind of uh, for for if you put it in this timeline we are going to actually look at uh, uh, the knowledge that was learned in um, uh, in over um, uh, your uh, uh, like over last uh, say uh, like from our Indus Valley civilization or and even slightly older than that. So we'll we'll talk about those uh, as we progress in this uh, uh, in this module. So so just wanted to show you that uh, if you compare this so with uh, uh, our uh, uh, existence uh, on this planet and also uh, like uh, in, in terms of uh, 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 like a, what, what environmental impact that we have created uh, that that puts us in a very uh, humbling experience especially if you look at today's world uh, for the last uh, uh, year and a half now in we are already end of September so by um, December, it will be almost like two years. Of course, the lockdown is started in March of uh, 2020. Uh, but uh, if you think about that, that a very tiny species of uh, this particular virus has created so much of uh, havoc in the entire world. Our entire uh, system has been disturbed. Uh, we are uh, in, uh, in a scenario now where uh, uh, we have to uh, like a uh, we are getting uh, uh, like trapped in our home. Everybody has to we are, we have we have been talking through this screen. So what I'm trying to say that as humans, while we have progressed, we sometimes think that we are actually ruling the world. We have to this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic was also a a kind of a signal to show us that human is only just one species on this planet. We are not the only species, and we don't control everything. We are one species on the of this particular planet. There were a lot of species before us, which was which uh, used this planet, and there will be a lot of species after us. So, and so that doesn't mean that we should all stop. <laughs> when I say there will be a lot of species after us, that doesn't mean that we should all stop doing everything, saying that like uh, what to do now. It's a uh, uh, it, we shouldn't just take relax and we have to we have to go from this planet anyway. No, uh, because you look at the timeline. One second is 52,000 years. So even somebody says that we will be the human race may not exist, say, after 1000 years. We are talking about millions and millions of years. So so that's that's not there. But just we, we have to just be should realize. And that realization, again, when we will go back and you may have seen that, that realization was already there in our Indian knowledge system, in, in our traditional knowledge, where we were always, that's why, see, many times we make, uh, sometimes say, you may have uh, seen people making in a lighter way as well, that in India we have, everything is a God. Uh, so there is, there, is a, there is a concept behind that. There is a concept behind that we have put trees also important we put water also river is also important river is very very important the entire civilization actually goes so because un unfortunately over the years what happened is we have made certain things god but then we don't take care of those gods so that's that's of course is a problem we are not taking care of the water or the river uh, properly as we should have as we were as we were supposed to as we were actually told in our in our Indian knowledge system, but over the time it got, you can say, uh, uh, I, for the lack of the better word, we can say that the corrupt practices came in, although it's not a proper word there, but uh, uh, the our uh, practices, we, we got deviated, we can say that, and then uh, it started creating a lot of these environmental issues. So that's uh, uh, kind of give you the big picture on, uh, uh, on this environmental uh, uh, stuff. And then if you can see over here, there is also a uh, like if a growth in population. Uh, that's again uh, another factor which has led to our uh, 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 impact on the environment. So global population, uh, if you look at in terms of uh, uh, like in 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 y, y axis is in millions, x axis is your timeline. Uh, since it is in million, you see a flat line over here. 
uh, you don't see much increase until uh, we come to AD. Uh, but it's as I said, it's a thousand million. So all the number is there. But since because of this scale, it shows up as if uh, the population was zero. Population was not zero. Population was, of course, we know that brown, the Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, uh, Middle. Uh, every every uh, time we had, of course, the population was much, much, much less, as you can see in this particular uh, time scale right here. Last two hundred, uh, last two hundred years, sharp increase in population. Today we are close to 8 billion people, 7.6 billion in middle of 2017. Uh, today we are close to 8 billion people and out of that 8 billion, 1.4 billion is in India itself. So 1.4 out of 8, so we are looking at like one sixth of the world's population. Uh, is this staying in uh, uh, is this staying in India? And if you take India, China together, so we are basically becomes almost like one third of the world population uh, is staying in these two countries. So, so we have uh, it's because of this sharp increase in population, and that also led to a uh, lot of activities which uh, created environmental degradation. And so it's and but it cannot be business as usual. Uh, we are already seeing the uh, problems of uh, uh, like environment and not managing things properly. Just recently, see, we had this a uh, uh, lot of rain in uh, Kharagpur area uh, just last week. Uh, huge rain happened. Even nowadays, now even now it's uh, off and on. Rain is going on as I as I, I keep on watching the weather of uh, Kharagpur. Uh, so it's um, it's a so and then the, the rain was in East, East Midnapur, West Midnapur, and several places. A few years back, we have uh, uh, like I think three, four years back, we had a huge Chennai flood. Uh, so those, uh, why those are happening? Because see, we have we are not managing our urban infrastructure properly, which uh, especially one of the things is that waste, uh, is plastic waste, choking all the stormwater drain system, and. Uh, the, of some of some aspect is of course that we have we have made so much of concrete concretization of our uh, uh, area, so there is rainwater cannot actually percolate down. That's why we have to talk. We have to talk about that rainwater harvesting and all those kind of stuff. So if it cannot percolate, so rain has to go somewhere, isn't it? So rainwater has to go somewhere. Uh, there is a natural. Uh, flow pattern, which is always there, like like a, uh, years after years, the rain, rain our rainwater will flow and it goes to the surface water, uh, finally to a big river and leading to the ocean. And then along the process, part of it will percolate down and uh, create what is the sources for groundwater for us. So it will uh, percolating down and uh, become part of the groundwater. So uh, since we have made all this concrete, uh, many, many places we have made it concrete impervious layer. Uh, so what will happen? So it's water cannot percolate down. Now, if the water cannot percolate down, it will start flowing. And if it's a strong water system is choked with plastics, but you will have water just uh, water logging and then you will get water into your houses and all those kind of stuff happening. So so this this uh, so we'll we'll look at some of the examples of how it was how these things were managed uh, in our uh, older uh, uh, part of uh, our existence on this planet. And it's a. Uh, also, of course, we can see many things which was done earlier has to be tweaked because of the increase in population, increase in uh, uh, population density, and also the way we are designing cities today. But there is there is knowledge from there that can be uh, looked into and can be made use of. So that's what. Uh, so increase in population, a lot of stress in into the environmental factors. So that's um, that is there. It's not only the increase in population, it also population is increasing in a much faster rate. So uh, so I'll, I'll go a little faster now. Uh, so it's a it's the population is also increasing at a much faster rate. Earlier it took almost 700 years for the world population to double from 0.25 billion to 0.5 billion. Today, and if you look at the recent times, the last one was 37 years. Uh, then of our rate of growth has gone down. But since we are already too much for people uh, already there, so uh, it, since our base is so high, uh, uh, you will see that all, although the rate of growth, uh, population rate of growth around the world has has gone down, but you will see that uh, next uh, from four to eight from uh, four to eight billions will happen in around fifty years, then seventy years, from five to ten billions, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, we will actually kind of going back up. So it's a uh, it. 
but the world population is uh, is is getting doubled in a much uh, quicker time and more the population more demand for resources more demand for different stuff so how all these uh, the last two three slides that i was trying to highlight how those issues actually impact the environmental system the global environmental system so if you take the global environmental system and then the divided into uh, three broader categories. So if you take the entire uh, system and though we can call one as natural resources oriented, one is our biodiversity, different species. Then we have this biogeophysical systems. Now, what is this? Biogeophysical system is our atmosphere, climate, biogeochemical cycle of nitrogen, carbon, phosphorus, iron, and all that. Uh, biodiversity relates to all the different species. Uh, we are having issues of mass extinction. We saw that in the past. A biodiversity loss, invasive species. Uh, we are seeing like every year we lose certain species. So if you Google, you'll find that uh, every year we have several species are being lost. Uh, natural resources is our water, minerals, fossil fuels, land productivity, uh, and all these pollutions associated with all the different activities that is also there. So, in uh, and they they interact with each other. These three systems they interact with each other. Uh, where whatever we do, we do impact them. So if you are uh, when we talk about impact uh, in uh, uh, in industrial ecology, which is a subject area by itself, some of you may be familiar with that. In industrial ecology uh, area, uh, this is a basic equation that is used in terms of uh, 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 this uh, calculating this impact. So impact, uh, especially when we're looking at this environmental impact, is population times affluence times technology. It is also called as IPAT equation because I, P is population, A is affluence, T is technology. So that's the IPAT equation. This is a basic equation. You, if you are, uh, if you're going to take a course on industrial ecology at any point, at some point in your uh, career, or if you read about industrial ecology, this will be uh, maybe in the first chapter, second chapter, you will find this equation. So, wh so what does that mean? Like, uh, it, it, and here, initially, we we saw we in the early era, uh, like a, we used to see mostly in the pre-commons era, it was a localized impact. Things were more of a localized impact. And you see those color changes. Uh, blue means some impact was already there. Red means uh, kind of significant, Im significant impact. So even in pre-common era, uh, we saw some significant impact in in terms of mass extension of certain species. So coming back to this equation, so as you saw, population is going up. You know, you saw that graph that population is actually going up. So impact will increase as the population goes up. So that that is uh, kind of not in our control. We can say population will go up. Of course, the rate of increase in population has gone down, but uh, there will be an increase in population. Uh, affluence in the at least in the uh, at least in the near uh, like in next few decades for sure we'll definitely see uh, for this century itself we'll see an increase in population. Affluence. Uh, GDP per capita is going up uh, in the entire world, uh, and we expect the GDP per capita to go up. People are becoming more and more affluent. Earlier, uh, uh, if you like travel by train, you could find laptop people watching movies on laptop, maybe in AC bogies, uh, air conditional, uh, three tires, two tires. Now you can see that in sleeper class too. So, uh, so and that's good. Uh, we all want people to have a better life, so affluence should go up. And uh, that is that is happening. Now, if population is going up and affluence is going up, now how affluence is related to impact? Then uh, anyone? How how affluence is related to impact? What what we are trying to say here? Any guess or? Uh, and in my class, uh, uh, in my class, not in the exam. Okay, <laughs> in my class, <laughs> no answer is a wrong answer. So, because I just want, I'm interested in the thought process behind that uh, answer. So that's a, you can, uh, so that you feel free and answer. Don't worry too much. Uh, it, if it's a wrong answer, that's okay. We all will, we all learn, isn't it? So there is a, uh, and as I said, no answer is actually a wrong answer. And many times things are bla not black and white, they're great. So you can put your perspective there. Uh, you can talk from where you are standing on that particular aspect. Yes, in the exam, there, of course, we have to, unless it's a question is asking your opinion, 
unless we are talk we're talking about facts and figures and other stuff, then there are some wrong answers and right answers. Uh, but uh, any any anyone anyone want to have a guess? Just wanted to make sure that you are still awake. Uh, uh, <laughs> sir, yes. This is Shalini here. Uh, sir, yeah. affluence may be in, uh, in considered as a like the affordability or the ability to have access to some services. So that's mm -hmm. how it can be related to impact. Yeah, like, very good. Very good. So yeah, so affluence means that you have more if you have more disposable income and uh, as you say, of course, the first thing we want to make sure that we have shelter, we have food and then uh, you have to have look at uh, uh, like whatever excess money you have. So if you are more affluent, you will have some excess money uh, other than your basic necessities and then you can start uh, consuming more. Uh, and one example you can look at is even in the middle class families now, uh, earlier there used to be only one TV in a house, isn't it? Uh, there would be one TV in the drawing room and everybody will sit down together and watch TV together. And uh, same thing in our hostels too. We used to have a one TV in the common room and there used to be a lot of fight uh, in uh, for getting that control over the remote and uh, who will and what will be watched on TV and whatnot. But nowadays, uh, everybody has their own laptop, so every laptop is a TV. Or in the, if you look at the, even in middle class families, you will find they are one TV in the bedroom, one TV in the drawing room. Nobody enjoys the TV anymore as much as used to be enjoyed, say, 20 years ago. <laughs> but uh, that's my, like, at least I can say from my my perspective. Uh, but it's, but we have multiple of them. We have multiple of uh, them in 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 our houses as well. Uh, I'm not a, a big TV man, I uh, so. Uh, like we do have one, but I don't even watch that that much. Uh, uh, I feel like there is nothing much to watch on TVs these days anyway. So especially the news channel has become so much of negative. So in um, so it's it's your uh, uh, in terms of uh, so affluence. So more more consumption of resources. TV was just one example. You look at all the because we can all relate to that, isn't it? Different electronic gadgets. Uh, different stuff that you more uh, people buying more car. Uh, when we talk about higher middle class, middle class families uh, having two cars, three cars, depending on uh, some, you can say it's a requirement. The requirement it is also a very subjective word. We can debate on that. What is required? What is not required? But uh, again, the affluence leads to more and more consumption of resources, and those con the resources has to be generated, and that has certain environmental impact associated with that. So population will go up, affluence will go up. So that means the impact will go up. Now, what is left with us? We all are most, I think we are mostly engineers here, engineers and uh, uh, scientists here. So the third part, the technology, that's where this whole, whenever we talk about environmental issues and other things, that's where it comes in picture, the technology aspect, Indian Institute of Technology, isn't it? So we're talking about the technology part. So in we have to come up with improvement in the technology in such a way so that we can negate the impact, increase in impact because of population and affluence. And in fact, try to bring it down. Uh, if we cannot keep it constant, it, just keeping constant may not be enough. Uh, as you hear that uh, uh, with respect to this climate change and all that, we if we just keep today's level, that is also, that's not enough. We have to actually go uh, reduce the carbon emissions and all that. So that's where our role comes in picture that's the that's where we all these different courses that you are taking ultimately is to come up with a better technology isn't it so better technology for different uh, based on our specialization are different things that we looked at one thing we should also realize that uh, uh, see specialization is because we just want, we cannot teach everything to everyone that's why the specialization is there but uh, mother earth does not work in silos isn't it so say if you go into a problem, it cannot just be an electrical engineering problem or a civil engineering problem or an architect's problem or a mechanical engineering problem. It is a problem which needs to be which needs solution, and the solution can, will and can come from all these different disciplines. That's why uh, any any natural problem requires all these different brains coming together. So that's uh, uh, in terms of your assignment, it will be really nice as for us to see uh, the different perspective from different disciplines, uh, different uh, specialization. So that will be uh, uh, we we are looking forward to uh, seeing that. 
on uh, starting i think that's what i think in chat box professor bhattacharya put that i think it was 8th of october when you have to submit so in so this is uh, this is what is kind of the governing equation of an industrial ecology where it, industrial ecology means industry and ecology ecology is related to the environment so interaction between the industry and the environment so that's the whole uh, in a big picture the course on industrial ecology that people talk about so what this is in in uh, initially it used to be more localized impact uh, because people, there were movement was not that much there even uh, trying to get the uh, resources were also kind of collected in a local way so that's uh, uh, was uh, uh, there then we started seeing in pre 1800s uh, we uh, we started seeing a lot of regional impact because uh, people started moving around a little bit so you started seeing more of and more and more of regional impact coming up when we people resources also started moving around so we started getting uh, stuff from one place and taking to the other places and uh, those things too and you can start seeing those things changing into red some of uh, things uh, which was uh, initially it was in blue uh, means little bit of impact a little bit of uh, but then it started is getting into red means uh, uh, we have already started polluting our water we have already started uh, creating issues in terms of our lawn, land productivity now if you look at go to the to today's uh, era uh, which is uh, since 1800s it's now the global era we call it a global era is and this in this global era because of uh, uh we have basically touched upon and touched upon and unfortunately in a negative way uh, to all, all these different aspects like we have uh, water pollution issues minerals issues you know, fossil fuel consumption uh, land productivity pollution all the physical systems mass extension biodiversity loss increase in invasive species and all that so all these are leading to a lot of uh, uh like a uh, problems in terms of uh, uh day to day activity that we have to do i keep on saying uh, like you may have uh, those of you who have probably uh, if you have taken uh, those who are uh, our senior undergrad you may have taken my course uh, with me evs in the past as well so there also you may have heard some some similar uh, discussion too uh, but i keep on saying all the time that see if you you cannot have a healthy economy without a healthy workforce you need to have a healthy workforce and healthy workforce cannot is not possible if the water is dirty air is dirty soil is dirty if you get sick all the time you cannot have healthy workforce and if you don't have healthy workforce you cannot have healthy economy gdp and all those numbers are very very important but at the same time taking care of environment is 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 also uh, like a, is a must it's it's we have to take care of the environment then other issues that have come up with is urbanization so in urbanization uh, that is uh, uh, like in uh, two out of every 10 people in 1900 in recent times if you look at two out of every 10 people lived in urban areas by 2030 we'll have six out of every 10 people so as you go into the workforce it is today is 2021 9 years from now once you when you are kind of settled down in the workforce and you start uh, contributing to, uh, like uh, as soon as you graduate you will start contributing to the society in whatever job you are but when you go a little bit uh, in the middle middle stage of your career a lot of challenges six out of 10 people and then towards the uh, as you progress in your career you are looking at seven out of every 10 people in the urban area now these brings lots of challenges uh, in terms of managing things in a better way uh, more and more urbanization make sure that urbanization does not happen in a haphazard way not increase in the slum areas having proper water infrastructure having proper wastewater collection and treatment managing of solid waste properly so all those things uh, comes in uh, picture so that's so ultimately see goal of all these courses that you are taking uh, is in in as part of your different program is make you ready for the future uh, as as much as possible of course see we cannot solve uh, what whatever will happen in future we don't know you have to you have to learn relearn unlearn again learn because things keeps on evolving okay so, so things will keep on evolving but at least uh, we can uh, with experiences of the past uh, and uh, some of the basic uh, concepts in science and technology we can try to predict that how to handle this situation 
but uh, we have as we as we make progress in our career again as we, as i said we have many times we have to unlearn and relearn uh, things so that's called uh, your uh, lifelong learning uh, that is uh, it's especially from a professional degrees uh, lifelong learning is uh, is definitely required so uh, it's, it's so these will be uh, so challenges in water wastewater solid waste management try to keep the air pollution down the vehicular emissions transportation sector all these will get impacted because of the urbanization so i think i have already covered enough to tell you why these environmental issues matter and uh, but just uh, to put it in uh, uh, today's contest so why we are discussing this why this particular aspect was included in this particular course uh, is there were we are in the middle of a kind of an emerging economy india is considered an emerging economy so when we talk about emerging economy we are, still have lots and lots of infrastructure to be built uh, of course developed countries also have to uh, many times repair their infrastructure ref refurbish uh, their infrastructure and redo their infrastructure too because things keeps on evolving there as well but in uh, in in indian context we are talking about from that primary level we are building so many of highways we have to build housing for all so it's lot of lots and lots of demand for resources for development activities so what we need to have is having a balanced approach try to minimize the impact on environment so in this particular aspect we will try to see that how it was done in in the in the traditional indian knowledge and what information can be extracted from there and can be made used to in the challenges that is coming into the future so what is the challenges coming into the future that's what we are trying to highlight right now uh, with all these say wastewater getting into our water bodies and creating this water pollution waste not managed properly industries not managed properly you are having this fire air pollution issues big problem in uh, ocean uh, we are in bengal uh, bengal we love our fish isn't it uh, much uh, like uh, we need our much uh, so and but and many of many of us would uh, enjoy seafood uh, but our seafood is in danger we are we are putting so many so much amount of waste especially plastic in the ocean in recent past in recent few last few decades we have put so much of plastic in the ocean that by 2050 we will have more plastic pieces in the ocean than the number of fish which is out there so compared to the fish population we'll have more plastic in the ocean which is not what we want isn't it and we don't want plastic getting into the uh, uh, the flesh of these fish and then it gets biomagnified from a smaller fish to the medium fish to the bigger fish and then you you consume those fish as part of the delicacy and then but then you have uh, you are eating part of plastic and if you eat plastic of course we can get sick in fact uh, we did some research recently uh, i was working with national geographic Uh, some of you may be familiar with i think all of you must be familiar with national geographic they have a tv channel the national geographic society they have their magazine and all that so national geographic society did fund a project uh, where we were looking at how mismanagement of solid waste along the river ganges is contributing to the plastic pollution in in in, in river in river ganga and and ultimately it's load into the ocean in bay of bengal and in into and in the ocean and uh, the project was uh, done both in india side as well as in bangladesh right as you know that a, a uh, like uh, as after uh, we have bhagirathi and hugli here and then the padma uh, padma nadi which padma river which is uh, uh, for elish march padma is actually considered better than <laughs> than in indian side so padma elish is considered much is is a like a considered more uh, uh, like good so but anyway uh, we were looking at so buet uh, people from buet in bangladesh and uh, uh, were involved and iit kharagpur and was involved from uh, india side and we also had the wildlife institute of india based in dehradun so they were looking at on the northern that uh, gomuk uh, harsal and those particular area so um, and we did find out that uh, a considerable uh, that that the report is already out there if some of you are interested you can just put it uh, if you you can uh, put that uh, in the chat box and i'll be happy to share that report you can find it from the national geographic website too uh, it is uh, where we have found that that there is a mismanagement of plastic almost nearly 
close to 30 to 40 percent of the plastic, though all those wrappers and other things that we generate, does end up in the surface water along the river Ganges, and then they finally go into the into into the ocean. Of course, it will get trapped uh, in between uh, in uh, some of the sediments. Then, when it goes to the Bay of Bengal with uh, uh, the uh, like the mangroves and all that, it gets trapped there. We have also seen. There was, uh, we have, we have National Geographic, they, as you know, they keep on taking lots of pictures. So we have seen the tigers trying to feed on tigers, trying to feed on those plastic pieces. Along the, uh, we also saw uh, this lace and kurkure uh, packages. Cows, somehow the cows likes to eat that. Uh, for probably to test uh, something, uh, the, the cows have a tendency to eat that. At one point, we saw actually one this, uh, young cow eating three pieces of those plastic bags. In, and then now they, they're eating those plastic bags. So we tried to, and we found in the cow's poop as well, the traces of plastic. Gober. In Gober, we found traces of plastic. Now, if it's, it's, it's there in the Gober, part of that plastic chemical could be there in the milk as well. We haven't tested milk. It's not that easy to test everything, as those of you who are from analytical background, lab work, you know. Uh, so uh, in um, it could be there in the milk. Now, if it's there in the milk, my rasagulla is in danger, isn't it? <laughs> so I don't want my rasagulla to get into danger. I don't want uh, all that nice sweets that I eat from Radhakanta or Sitala uh, in Kharagpur to get in danger. So... Uh, that's uh, that why why I put those example is then then you can otherwise what we think that it is somebody else's problem. Next time if when you are on campus and you go to Radhakanta and buy <laughs> buy a sweet you will remember my face <laughs> because uh, then you will say that yes uh, uh, is because if 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 these plastic chemicals are ending up in in the milk uh, then uh, it's 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 a it, it it's it's very 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 serious uh, issue isn't it so because we use so much of milk product we give milk to the babies uh, for the better better health but we don't want this uh, plastic uh, being uh, consumed there anyway so let's uh, move on uh, so as you can see there are other uh, issues associated with that as well and in uh, this is another concept of uh, overconsumption, which leads to these environmental issues. Uh, is is a concept called Earth Overshoot Day. Anyone familiar with this concept? It does make newspaper every year nowadays. Uh, whenever the new date comes out. Anyone want, is familiar? What does that mean? No. Okay, so can you repeat the question? This is what I'm asking is what what we are looking at the screen right now. This uh, the cons this Earth Overshoot Day. What do we? What is this day? What what do you mean by this day? Uh, actually, I'm not able to see your screen, sir. You are not able to see my screen. Yes, sir. Uh, some yes, other some other have uh, presented, sir. But now they are also not. Yeah, oh, that's not correct. Can you please present it again? Okay, let me do that. Uh, that's weird. Uh, that's kind of very childish of you to whoever did that. <laughs> you should not uh, do that. And I think we may have to. So, yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. So as soon as that happened, you should have let me know. I don't know whether you saw my previous slide or not. So anyway. Um, OK, so uh, in terms of uh, this art, but uh, the question is, are you uh, do you really like what is this art overshoot day? Anybody wants to. Uh, have a crack on it, like what is that? No, okay. So, as you can see over here, uh, it's uh, it uh, tends to talk about in last uh, 30, 40 years from 1970 onwards. Earlier, this green line means that in that particular year, we have uh, we have used all the resources that mother. So it's the let, let me back up. So that concept is, say, every year you can get certain resources. Uh, from Mother Earth, which is renewable resource. So we are getting renewable resource uh, from uh, Mother Earth, which is produced on an annual basis. So 
that resource uh, is me is what we consume. Now, if we are using the resource and consuming it over the entire year. So again, uh, uh, if I rephrase just to avoid any confusion, say you have say if we get X amount of resource that is produced by Mother Earth in a year, and if you're using that X amount over entire year going up to say 31st of December for that year, so we are good. So that means that we are uh, uh, like a, uh, we are uh, uh, using it. Uh, it's it's in a uh, we are using um, that resource for that particular for that particular year for the entire year. Now, if if you are uh, uh, like using it much before than December 31st, so that means that this uh, it's it's becoming. Uh, like we are becoming uh, like a, we are, we have to borrow resources uh, from uh, our reserves. Like just to give an example, like if I if I can relate it to that, uh, say you say if our salary is around for say if we, if we make around 12, 12 lakhs a year, uh, for example, and out of that twelve lakhs, you use that twelve lakh. We are supposed to use it. And for the entire up to from January to December, but say if I start using all those 12 lakhs by November, by October, by July, by August, what will happen? The remaining years I have to borrow. I have to borrow that money uh, for our for my for my living. I have to borrow that money from either from my savings or from my retirement account or from the either borrow it from somewhere or even put it on my credit card. So it's all borrowings that is happening. So that is what this whole concept is. So you see the green is the green line here uh, shows that uh, that is uh, it's it's basically your period where uh, uh, you are you are using it. We are using the resources that is being generated in that particular year. As you go more and more red is means you are getting more and more things on uh, loan. You are trying to get material. You are trying to get resources uh, from other um, uh, like a, from from the reserves. So as you can see over here from earlier, we used to be in December, which was good. Then gradually we move, moved into the Novembers. Then we moved into the Octobers, then September. Then then recently we have moved all the way into in, in terms of in July. So we are right now we are consuming resources, whatever the resources say, for example, in 2020 or 2021 uh, or 2019, this was 2019. This is 20. Uh, let me minimize that here. Yeah. So this is 2019. This is 2020. This is 2021. So whatever the resources that was produced by Mother Earth for our usage got used up by the end of July. So entire August, September, October, November. Right now we are actually today whatever we are con consuming, it is all coming from the reserves. It's not. Uh, is uh, it's it's not uh, the original. Uh, uh, the, it was not the resources that was produced in this particular year. So the renewable resources. So you can see here uh, that uh, the, this number went up to the July last year in 2020. You see, actually, it went back up a little bit. It went back. Uh, it kind of reached to the level of around 2004. But then again, this year it dipped below down. Now, can anybody tell me why there was a we could we were slightly better last year? In terms of due to lockdown, yes, obviously, isn't it? Because of the lockdown, because of all that uh, uh, things that was uh, and that lockdown was throughout the world. This is we are talking about the entire planet, huh? This is for the entire planet. So because of the lockdown, uh, we saw slight improvement, but then again, we are back to square one this year. So this this cannot this cannot sustain is it this is not a this is not a way uh, right now you need 1.7 earth uh, we only have one earth there is no planet b there is a, in fact there is a uh, there is a book out there on which talks about this uh, there is no plan b or there is no planet b uh, for uh, for our planet so we need to we need to preserve this planet we need to make sure that our future generations our uh, grandchildrens, their grandchildrens can also have, but they they should have better lifestyle, better uh, life conditions than what we had. At least, if not better, at least the same lifestyle they should have. 
So, but if if in this uh, way, it's not going to work. It's we will we'll go bankrupt, isn't it? If this is the if this is the finances, if I have for my house or for my company uh, that I'm con I'm uh, uh, expending more, 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 and then uh, I'm uh, with respect to what I'm earning every year. Uh, what will happen? My finances will go totally haywire, and I'll I'll become bankrupt. So so we will be becoming a resource bankrupt uh, in in terms of if we continue like this. So that's the reason why we need to kind of go back up and try to fix this problem. Some of the recent problems which has really raised a lot of awareness in terms of environmental issues were the greatest smog of London in 1952. It was a severe air pollution event that affected British capital of London in early December. Every year during the winter season, we see the problem in India as well in terms of uh, pollution problem in Delhi, uh, even in Kolkata. Kolkata, those of you who are from Kolkata, we have uh, Dhapa is one of the uh, dump sites uh, in Kolkata. Just across Dhapa, we have several uh, like a five star or uh, even uh, high class hotels and they have nice balconies in, in those rooms. They have a beautiful balcony out there, but many, many part of the year that balcony is not usable. People cannot even open the window and go into that balcony uh, because uh, it's such a for like fall smell which comes from that dhapa and uh, and because of the garbage burning there and the garbage burning is many times it's a natural phenomena because of the methane that is produced in there uh, that catches fire uh, it in um, because of the isothermic reaction and all that so we'll not go into the great detail of uh, uh, technical like a technical details of what is happening how the fire is happening but that a lot of uh, air pollution issues uh, but this great smoke of london uh, it's affected the British capital in uh, early December. So this raised awareness in terms of the uh, air pollution part. Uh, this uh, burning river in Ohio uh, in 1969, uh, it's uh, that it created a lot of water pollution and that led to Clean Water Act and creation of federal environmental protection agencies in the US uh, in terms of uh, uh, trying to protect uh, the water. And Love Canal tragedy, uh, this is again, it's a huge, uh, one of the most famous uh, and important examples of groundwater pollution is the Love Canal tragedy. In, it's in Niagara Falls. So if you are traveling uh, from US to Canada uh, through this Niagara Falls border, uh, through the, if you, most of like, this is this is one, Niagara Falls is one destination which is very popular uh, for our Indian tourists uh, uh, who come here. Indians definitely like to go to Niagara Falls uh, because we, we read about them. We are so much mesmerized by it. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, definitely, it's it's. If you are in this in the area, you should go and see it. Uh, so, if you're traveling from U.S. side to the Canadian side, uh, you will you will come through this Love Canal area, uh, which is in in U.S. side in the in, in the state of New York. Uh, um, so there, uh, they had uh, uh, some of you. Uh, just very briefly, I'll tell the story of it. It's a uh, uh, you can go and look at look it up on YouTube and Google. There are a lot of uh, stuff around it. So what, what happened was the man mismanagement of hazardous waste. So mismanagement of hazardous waste, people, uh, they buried the hazardous waste uh, uh, because they didn't knew what to do with, the, with that. There was no, see, all these man-made chemicals uh, that we have created after the Second World War, we don't have idea of how to manage them. So it uh, becomes an issue uh, as we, we, we learn, we are learning, we are still learning, but at that particular point, there was no, they didn't had uh, the know-how of to what to do that. There was no regulations also out there. So they started putting into these drums and put it into the underground. And then uh, this, there was a plant, the name of the plant was Hooker Chemical. Uh, they closed down their business and then they, uh, the land got sold to the city. And then uh, the town and the town built a neighborhood there, even a school there. And later on, people found that uh, these chemicals leaching out and getting into their basements, uh, getting into uh, uh, coming into the soil and creating all those different uh, environmental and human health issues. So that led to this uh, uh, like a Superfund Act and uh, Hazardous Waste Management Act and all that. So it's it's a quite uh, uh, like a sad story in terms of one of the major uh, uh, environmental disaster. You can say that. Uh, then uh, we have this different acts in Indian contest. Also, we have different rules. I'll show you uh, that uh, uh, at some point of time. In recent past in India, one of the major problem we had was this Bhopal gas tragedy. 
this bhopal gas tragedy uh, is uh, uh, you if you are not familiar you should get familiar uh, if uh, because this is something uh, around 10000 people were killed and many more were injured when the union carbides this pesticide plant it leaked 40 tons of methyl isocyanide gas into the air and that sends a cloud of poison into the surrounding uh, city of around 1 million that was in bhopal it was in very early morning hours uh, so whoever could wake up could run away uh, was saved people who got caught in there so mostly small children ladies old people uh, they uh, more more casualties happened in uh, in their uh, cases uh, still a lot of uh, litigations and other things are going on uh, with this bhopal gas tragedy then uh, this was a nuclear plant accident we had all another nuclear plant plant accident uh, because of this tsunami few years back in uh, in japan uh, this was in uh, shevrodol nuclear plant in ukraine uh, the effect of that is still visible there surat plague uh, which was uh, one of i don't know uh, i think many of you in the class probably even born after surat plague uh, it's uh, it's 1994 plague in india uh, which was in bubonic and pneumonic plague in south central and southwestern india from 26th of august to 18th of october in 1994 and this led to a lot of awareness about waste management uh, uh, in india indian contest uh, surat uh, i don't know if we have some student from surat right now uh, in this particular class but surat used to be a not that so much clean city in uh, late 80s early 90s uh, today it is one of the decent city you can call their waste management system is working like every system need, can can be improved uh, but uh, uh, they it was it was working uh, it is working yeah, i can say in a decent way uh, compared to other cities in india so they had uh, this uh, plague and that lead to a uh, lot of uh, uh, like kind of awareness in terms of having proper environmental uh, system proper urban environmental system and that this leads to uh, in in recent times i would say this lead to a lot of uh, improvement in india then uh, there was an oil spill in 2010 some of you must have heard about this one uh, it's in the bp oil spill uh, in the in the gulf of mexico it's uh, one of the uh, considered the largest marine oil spill and that created a lot of impact uh, in there too so uh, so these are and then we have this air pollution issues as you can see uh, now burning of uh, agricultural land and all those different aspects so things are again many of these aspects are not only it's it's not that technology is not available there or it's not that we don't know what what to do it becomes more of an economics and all that too uh, uh, especially say when we talk about the spirally burning a uh, lot of things comes in picture so we'll try to highlight some of those stuff in there then water pollution uh, it's although as i said earlier we have considered uh, we have made these uh, rivers as goddess and all that but we don't take care of the river properly so that's uh, leads to a lot of uh, uh, this pollutions getting into our water then of course uh, soil pollution because of solid waste because of uh, marine and all that solid waste another a big area so these are all these different this different uh, uh, these are again some snapshots of different issues that we have in terms of uh, uh uh that that we face today now a lot of noise pollution is also there which is again a uh, lot of uh, issue there uh, noise pollution creates a lot of uh, negative impact too and marine pollution that we talked about in terms of plastics and all that you saw some of those pictures you saw the cow eating that uh, plastic pieces and this you see this uh, this plastics in here and all those uh, so plastic pieces getting into the ocean so it could be your plastic bags and then it looks very much like a jellyfish and uh, the, so the bigger uh, bigger uh, plastic the bigger uh, like the, the fish cannot distinguish between this and this and they start eating uh, plastic and then they get sick and it and it goes from lower fish to the higher fish so all those issues have led to uh, this uh, concept of a uh, different environmental impact and uh, over the years you see ultimately as i said our goal is to have a proper a proper uh, earth to be a proper place isn't it that's the for our living so global warming is one aspect in terms of climate change and environmental impact uh, it's um, global warming leads to variation in temperature 
it leads to weather extremities. If you have weather extremities, if you have too much of rain, too less of a rain, uh, or uh, that leads to your water and food supply. Uh, say if you have too much of rain, that also is not good. Most of your uh, agricultural pro uh, gets affected uh, if you have a huge, like too much of rain. If you no rain, that is also a problem. So weather extremities leads to imbalance in water and food supplies. That will lead to malnutrition, diarrhea, those kind of problem. That leads to the human health impact. So they're all related together. So uh, and if you look in terms of uh, uh, different emissions that is coming out, if you look at the uh, emissions that is getting into into the atmosphere, uh, agriculture from the agricultural sector, uh, we have the rice cultivation, which because rice always happens in a, a standing water emissions from soil, manure management, agricultural crop residues, and then other uh, like the, the natural phenomena that happens in in terms of fermentation and all that that is releasing uh, emissions to the atmosphere. Packaging sector again, uh, this processed food packaging uh, that is uh, leads to a lot of uh, uh, emissions coming out. In terms of food waste management, the landfill, uh, that's around 18%. Uh, in, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, different, so not the food waste, the different uh, sectors, uh, different industrial sectors, as you can see, the landfills is around 18%. Then you have natural gas and petroleum systems, you have coal mining, and uh, you have uh, uh, manure management. So all those different aspects are there. So natural gas, petroleum is number one in terms of uh, and uh, in terms of emissions coming from different industries, landfills are number three, and the landfill is mostly related to your uh, like uh, uh, degradation of organic waste. So when you have this degradation of organic waste, you will have the CO2 being produced, and the CO2, uh, and then uh, when you are in aerobic phase, when it becomes anaerobic, you have methane being produced. So methane goes into the atmosphere. Methane is considered 25 times more dangerous than CO2 in terms of uh, uh, greenhouse gas. And uh, if you don't manage waste properly, and uh, if we have this weather extremities, we create, we see all these different uh, flood events. Flood events, tsunami events, uh, what happened in, uh, say, Uttarakhand a few years back. Uh, again, here, it's uh, we have been playing with nature. We have been constructing a lot of stuff in the floodplain. Uh, we are trying to, uh, in terms of all this construction, uh, is creating more problem in terms uh, whenever uh, any of these weather extremities happen. We looked into the population growth already, so I'll not uh, spend too much time here. Urban also, we talked about that. So uh, coming off all these, uh, uh, there is a there is a limit to the growth model. So our population is going up, uh, and our industrial output uh, is is also going up. Uh, like food production has to go up, we have to feed all these people. But at the same time, we have to look at that there is a limit. There is a limit to all this. So that's where this whole concept of, again, uh, uh, that the traditional knowledge that we had, uh, that we will start getting into now, that's where this whole concept uh, comes in picture, where we cannot have business as usual. We cannot keep on producing all these waste and create all those problems which I just highlighted. So the reason I want to highlight all those problems is to kind of like uh, to to basically to to see the mirror uh, for us, like where we are today and how to fix that problem, how to kind of uh, do it in a better way. So if with the increase in population, increase in resources, industrial output is also going up, but there is always a limit, and uh, we have to start. Uh, kind of uh, looking at our resources uh, in in a more rather than wasting stuff, uh, try to re regenerate uh, materials, regenerate resources from what is already available, and try to bring that back into the economy. So that's the whole concept of circular economy and all that. It's and people have already started working on it in Western European, which is uh, countries are which always leads in this aspect. They are. They're already uh, working on that particular uh, goal. And all these concepts th does lead to all the 17 sustainable development goal that we have, SDGs, probably you may have uh, uh, talked about that earlier as well. So this, this 617 SDGs that is out there, it is all, uh, most of it as you will look at, is relates to some of these uh, 
uh, environmental factor, whether you talk about clean water and sanitation, you talk about uh, number 12, which is a responsible consumption, sustainable cities, you talk about life below water, you talk about climate action, affordable clean energy, life off land, good health and well-being, all those, uh, even gender equality uh, is relates to environmental factors. So all these, uh, these environmental factors has to be made uh, we have to work on those environmental factors. And there are several Indian government programs that are also there in uh, in over last, uh, say, five, ten years where people are looking at uh, this aspect. So if we kind of get into uh, some of now getting into a bit of a specifics on uh, in terms of waste management. Uh, so, so far we have been talking more in general. I tried to give you a big picture. Uh, we looked into um, those uh, uh, like a, a big picture global issues. We talked about the environmental issues. We talked about the population dynamics. We try to talk about uh, this linear economy, circular economy, and uh, all those different aspects associated with that, different pollutions that is happening. And so we, I hope my goal of uh, doing this uh, so far was to kind of show you uh, the picture of the current contest with some historical background. Now we'll start getting into some details in terms of waste, solid and liquid waste, and looking at some of the practices of the ancient uh, and uh, ancient systems and how that can help us design things slightly better uh, for today's uh, scenario, how we can learn from the ancient system and apply uh, that in today's scenario. Uh, so that's what we'll be trying and then focusing more on uh, solid and liquid waste. But before we get there, any any questions, any thoughts you want to share? Like I've been talking for so long, uh, so I want to hear from you. Uh, like what? Uh, any any question or any comments? Are you still there? Are you still awake? This that's the problem with this online uh, system. Is uh, you don't you don't know like what is what is happening on the other side of the screen. So that's uh, right, it's clear, sir. Okay, so what so what is uh, so so what do you like when you say it's clear? What do you mean? Like uh, it's uh, no no questions, no uh, comments. <laughs> No comments means uh, there are no uh, like uh, questions, sir. Right? Okay. Uh, sir, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, in the IPT equation, uh, I think uh, there were uh, four uh, four things. I mean, impact equal to uh, population into uh, affluence into technology, right? So yes. Can you please tell me how do we quantify affluence and uh, technology to? Uh, I mean, I don't know. What is the quantification of impact? Yes. Yeah, so as you as you said, the impact. When we say this impact, it's a IPAT equation. So you have I is equal to P times A times T. So P is your population, A is the affluence, and uh, uh, T is the technology. We know that. Uh, so you say the how to quantify how to quantify population is easy. Uh, that is uh, that we already we, we know that. In terms of affluence, we look at uh, basically GDP per capita. So it's your GDP per capita is what you kind of look at. Uh, uh, so we can we know GDP, gross domestic product, and then per, we know the population, so we can calculate GDP per capita. So that kind of gives us an idea of affluence. Uh, was that Sovan? Was who was asking that question? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. So. Is that uh, so? That's 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 how you calculate uh, affluence, and then uh, technology is uh, when we look at the technology, we look at the uh, the emissions, uh, like uh, the the impact from the technology. So our goal is to reduce the impact as much as possible. We have to go towards more greener technology. Uh, more uh, uh, when we say greener technology, it's a uh, it's very difficult uh, sometimes to uh, quantify. Uh, like how to say something is green or not. Uh, so that's uh, uh, that you need to, uh, the quantification of green is done using certain tools, uh, which we will not be, if, uh, I can, if you can, uh, if you can mute, there is some background noise. Uh, yeah. 
thank you. So uh, it's if you um, uh, when you when we talk about this technology part, uh, so we have to we, when we say we we have to have more greener technology. What do we mean by that? What is green? So how will we quantify the green? Yes, so when you wanted to say something. Yes, sir. So so by green, I mean uh, it's not harmful to nature with respect to other source resources. I mean, if we think about, I mean, as per my understanding, if I am thinking about uh, 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 automobile emissions, then uh, greener emission is, I mean, greener technology is uh, the cars are using uh, battery power, maybe in uh, in in uh, in space. Uh, I mean, uh, without using petrol or diesel or any conventional, uh, I mean, fuel, right? So, I mean, uh, not fossil fuel other than anything, maybe hydrogen, maybe uh, battery. Yeah, so, so I, that's. I, I mean, I don't know how to quantify the <laughs> technology. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. See, uh, so there are um, uh, there are ways to quantify it, and uh, that's uh, uh, it's there is a concept called life cycle assessment. Uh, this is a, it's a LCA, especially from uh, environmental point of view. Uh, we can quantify things uh, using the tool of LCA. And uh, you can you can always uh, these days I call it Professor Google. <laughs> so although there is a there is a limit to what Professor Google can provide, it can provide you information, but uh, it cannot have this kind of discussion, isn't it? So but there is there, there are a lot of resources available these days. So like there is an LCA is the life cycle because what you are talking about what uh, Sovan was saying right now is uh, from a qualitative point of view. We know that yes, going away from fossil fuel is good. Going uh, to certain things, doing certain, doing recycling is good. But how much good? How much is really it is good? What is the uh, uh, what? How it is? Uh, it is going to like what is the what, how much impact it will reduce? So we have to quantify those numbers, and those quantification of those numbers is possible uh, by using some. So some uh, analytical tool, and uh, so we we need numbers, isn't it? We need numbers. Say if I if I say that uh, I'm using a petrol car today, and I uh, say in, in our campus, for example, in IIT Kharagpur campus, we move all from petrol car to this electric vehicle. Now, how much good we have really done? We know that it 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 definitely had helped in air pollution uh, on campus, but is it really going to how much help it is going to do to the environment? Overall, now when you move from the petrol car, as uh, the example came of that, as you move from the petrol car to this uh, or diesel car to this electric vehicle, you also have to realize that electric vehicles needs to be charged, and that charging of the electric vehicle will happen from certain energy source. Now, if you are using the energy source of coal-based thermal power plant, you are not really so that also has an environmental impact. Of course, petrol diesel has environmental impact, but coal-based thermal power plant has an environmental impact too. Now, when you make those batteries, when you make those batteries, the battery uses a lot of rare earth metals. Those electrical vehicle batteries, they use a lot of rare earth metals. Rare earth metals on the periodic table, anything on the periodic table you cannot create, you cannot destroy. You can only change its form from one form to another form. So, it's the rare earth metals. They are called rare because they are not in that much quantity, isn't it? Because they are rare. <laughs> That's why they are called rare earth metals. They are called. They are not abundant. Now, this if you are you if you are using too much of these rare earth metals, critical metals in our in our electric vehicle, we have to mine those materials too to bring it uh, to those electric electric uh, uh, vehicle ma battery manufacturing uh, plants where the battery will get manufactured. So mining of those rare earth metals has certain environmental implications. So all those things needs to be put into perspective. Then you need to see how much real benefit you got moving from petrol to this electric vehicle. And there is a, there are, and this can be done using the tool of what is known as life cycle assessment. Uh, those of you who are interested to learn more about life cycle assessment, uh, you can do that. In fact, uh, you might be familiar with NPTEL, uh, NPTEL Soyam platform, which is the Indian equivalent of, you can say, Crossera or EDX. Crossera EDX is wonderful websites to learn new things. If you're not, if you have not gone there, you should go there at uh, 
uh, Coursera and EDX. I'm, I think that many of you must be familiar with that already, but if you're not, you can just Google uh, the word Coursera and EDX uh, and you will find that. Uh, so they also have a lot of courses up there. So in uh, Indian, uh, from the government of India, uh, Ministry of Education, uh, under their NPTEL SOYAM platform, there are several courses. So there is a course on life cycle assessment. Uh, it's an eight week course. Uh, and that course videos are already available on YouTube. And the reason I'm telling you that because that's my course. <laughs> so uh, so I know what is there. So we do talk about in that eight week course every week. We have two, two and a half hours lecture. Every video is half an hour. Those videos are available on YouTube. You can watch it for free. Yes, if you want a certificate in that course, you have to register. And uh, you have to register for that course and you pay around 1100 rupees, I think. And that exam happens in every uh, big cities in India. And you can uh, uh, they, they, they take the exam and do the certification and all that. So that's, uh, uh, I think, uh, kind of uh, uh, in terms of how to quantify uh, the, it, uh, so using that uh, tool of LCA. Uh, and uh, you can learn more about LCA there. Of course, uh, once we are, we are all back on campus, you can always come to my office and we'll talk about all these things so if you're interested. A a application of LCA could be in every field. As you will, you, if, you go on L if you go on Google, you will find that it doesn't matter whether you're mechanical engineer, civil engineer, architect, or uh, uh, electrical engineer, whoever. You can use the LCA tool as part of your BTEC final year project, uh, which, is, which will add in another dimension uh, to your uh, 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 to your uh, his stuff. Okay, so um, any other question? Any other uh, question? Uh, sir, sir, yeah. this is uh, sir. You talked regarding the Earth overshoot day. So, mm -hmm. like, what are the basic characteristics or the parameters which we study under that particular analysis? Yeah, so what happens is say we we know our uh, planet. So based on the different, uh, there was two aspects there. There are two things which we compare. One is what is the renewable resources we can produce from the Mother Earth on a yearly basis. So that was our green green line basically that on that green bar. So that much of renewable resource we are going to get every year from the Mother uh, Earth. So based on our forest, based on our agricultural land, based on the water that we have, the amount of fish population. So all the different aspects that we consume, uh, we can get uh, those uh, resources. So we can calculate, we can quantify how much is produced on an yearly basis. So that's your green bar. And then the, we compare that with how much we are consuming. The consumption also based on the industrial activity, based on uh, our uh, how, like a purchasing, our uh, like a consumption of different things, we try to quantify those numbers as well. So it's basically addition. It's a it's kind of an it's kind of an auditing exercise where you on one hand you are looking at the resources that is produced on a on on a those resources are talking about that uh, renewable resource, the resource that Mother Earth has the ability to produce for us on a yearly basis and on the right and on the other side we look at how much resources we are consuming on a yearly basis so if as you can see we are consuming more and more resources as compared to what can be produced so is that help answers your question solidity yes sir thank you sir okay okay any other uh, point No more uh, points, so it's uh, 7.40. So we already had, uh, oh, sorry, 7.40 here. So it's uh, uh, in 7.10 uh, uh, over there. So it's uh, 7.10 uh, at your place. So uh, yeah, so uh, the class goes up to 7.30, isn't it? So we maybe we'll uh, wrap it up in another 10 minutes and uh, I'll, I'll let you go. And then we can continue in our next uh, class as well. So let's go back here, uh, look at uh, some of these. OK, so. So this. Uh, we are talking about. OK, so this is uh, uh, when, when we uh, this waste management is essentially my core area of work as well, so. Uh, so solid waste, liquid wastes, uh, these are the life cycle, circular economy. Those are the areas that I work on. Uh, those of you 
who may have googled on me you may have found that as well so it's uh, so in terms of waste which is it's it's a huge problem it's and it's a, we are seeing that uh, uh, in uh, uh, like a, you go out of your house uh, you see on the side of the road you see all those dump sites uh, creating all sorts of uh, problem so if you look at uh, in terms of where we are headed in in terms of uh, a global snapshot of the solid waste management so world is generating around 2 billion tons of municipal solid waste annually this is 2017 numbers so the number may have gone up a little bit and that number is expected to go up to around 3.4 billion tons by 2050 so there will be 70% increase to uh, in increase in garbage so we'll have lots of garbage that is being produced so if you look at this garbage, actually individually we have around, uh, if, if you look at the different, uh, this is again global average, metal is around 4%, glass is 5%, plastic is 12%, paper and cardboard 17%, food and green waste 44%. So that's what it is there. So individually we do have metals, we have been recycling, we have been producing new things from that. Glass could be recycled. Plastic can be recycled as well. Paper and cardboard could be recycled. In fact, if you have bought classmate papers, like classmate is just one brand, but if you buy whatever uh, notebook you are using, if you just go onto the uh, last page, back cover, or maybe in the front cover also, it you may see that this much percentage of recycled paper. Uh, so they do get recycled to different products. Um, uh, they making new paper, making tissue paper, making different kind of products from that as well. Same with the cardboard. And then the food and green waste is around 44%, which has all this uh, stuff in there. Now, so individually, if you can, and if you add them up, they are not, they don't add up to 100% because there are a lot of other components out there, which is not captured here. These only those things are captured, which you can easily do the resource recovery. So it's around five plus four, nine, 12 is 21 plus 17 is 38 plus 44 so that you are looking at uh, around uh, uh, what uh, 38 plus 44 it's around 81 82 percent so 82 percent of the waste could be resource recovered and we can do some value added products from that uh, but if you look at today it does not happen that way we uh, the recycling very good recycling rate you find is in uh, some of the Western European countries, around 40%. Most places you find even like between 10 to 20%. So why it is with the problem, so what is the problem? Why we are not able to do that? It's more of a, it's not that of a technological problem, it's more of a management problem. So it's uh, because everything gets mixed up. See, individually metal, has their market, can be recycled, glass has market, plastic has market, paper and cardboard has certain market, food and green waste has market, and that can be used. But when we when you mix everything together, it, you cannot really do much with that waste. Everything gets mixed up and then your uh, uh, things, uh, it, it becomes a problem. The mixed garbage, you cannot do much with the mixed garbage. So that's a, so, the number one thing we need to do is in terms of try to keep this wet and dry waste separately. To keep the wet waste separate, dry waste separate. And in the wet waste can be either you can go for composting, you can go for anaerobic digestion, and you can produce a value added product from that. Dry waste, as you can see, metal, glass, plastic, paper, and cardboard, they can be, you, you can recycle those and you can use it. And there is a huge market for these, as you can see in the regional waste uh, generation. It's a huge market for waste. Uh, we are in South Asia. We are, so we are, uh, if you look at the how much million tons of waste that is produced, that's a huge amount of waste. Uh, uh, East Asia and the Pacific, which includes China, has uh, is the highest than the Europe and Central Asia. Then South Asia, North America is uh, uh, even less than South Asia in terms of the total amount of garbage produced. But if you go to per capita, of course, that uh, North America will be much higher than what we see in the South Asia. So a lot of waste. Uh, those of you who want to become an entrepreneur uh, later on, want to, uh, there's a lot of opportunity of a lot of startups and other things in this area. It's a uh, huge uh, area where which a lot, lots of innovations is required in this area as well. So in right now, why the lot of innovations are required, as you can see, uh, right now, 
uh, in uh, low income countries over 90% of the waste is mismanaged so you, you have mismanagement of nearly 90% of the waste uh, in uh, this low income countries and uh, it's we are if you don't manage it properly if you don't uh, manage this waste properly we'll be literally be living in a waste if nothing is done so we'll be in a uh, kind of uh, we, 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 it will create a lot of uh, water air soil and other pollutions so if you look at how the waste is in being managed and we'll stop after this slide today and uh, we'll kind of uh, in the next week we'll go into some uh, details in uh, we'll get the examples from uh, uh, indian uh, traditional knowledge system and try to see how it how it should be managed properly so we'll uh, so but how it is managed today so if you look at uh, this example and um, you can see from the around the world uh, in this triangle, the top one is reduce, reuse, and we have recycle, energy recovery, and then disposal. So around uh, uh, in, in terms of waste that is being uh, uh, like a recycle, uh, we, which is the second one, you can see that uh, in European Union, they do pretty decent job of around 43%. Then UK is around 39%. US is only 24%. And uh, then we have uh, China, uh, uh, the China, India, and other places. It's mostly informal recycling, so we don't have the data. In terms of the waste production, we are going to. Uh, we uh, this is per person per year. So as you can see, UK and Europe, uh, five have more than 500. US, and North America, in US, 730 kg per year. In Indian context, we still produce very less. But the number is uh, actually is uh, is going to go up. Um, it may have already gone up. Uh, these these maps are uh, slight older maps, but uh, things have, I mean, the numbers may have changed. But uh, we are just trying to compare a little bit. Uh, so waste to energy is very popular in uh, uh, in some parts, like in Europe. You see a lot of waste to energy plant in India. Also, we are building some waste to energy plants in China. They have been building waste to energy plants as well. But it's still around the world, as you can see, even in Western European countries, which uh, in the European Union, they still have nearly 30% of the waste going into the landfill. So, and as you and, and as you, you come to some other countries like India, China, and other places, the number kind of goes up and up. So we have to develop a lot of technologies uh, which try to reduce the waste going into the landfill. Landfill is not a really a solution. Landfill is more like you're trying to keep the waste there, uh, hoping that something will happen to it. And uh, probably you will have a better technology later on to handle that. So let's uh, stop here uh, today. Um, uh, so next week uh, we will uh, get some examples uh, and then try to kind of whatever the issues that we have highlighted uh, today, we'll try to see how those can be solved using our traditional knowledge system, some of the newer technological innovations and all that. Okay, so thank you. Uh, you can. It's, uh, for some of you, it might be the dinner time already. Depends on how close you take the dinner. So, thank you, and uh, I'll see you next week at the same time. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank you, sir. Meanwhile, me. Thank you, sir. Me, thank yeah, you, sir. Meanwhile, meanwhile, if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat box, and thank I'll try you, to answer. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.